Greetings and salutations. It is Monday, October 19th, and I realized that I don't really know enough about politics to make a full political video because today in Canada is election day. Um, so I'm going to do a rift and talk about Canadian politics because that's a thing that's happening. Come on. There we go. Okay, I do have a greater rift keystone. So we're going to do a greater rift, and it's going to be awesome. I've dug up some new things for you to take a look at. Let's be honest. All right. So. We're going to do this. We're going to do a Greater Rift. I don't want to do Torment 10. I can pretty comfortably do Torment 8, I think. So we're going to do Torment 8. And yeah, this is a thing that's happening. Strong enough to survive. So in Canada, we have... Um, it is not a two-party system, much like the American election system. At the end, turn the sound down. Um, we have a lot of... No, not a lot. We have a fairly decent amount of parties to represent the various interests in Canada. So our main parties are the Conservative Party of Canada, which is heralded by Stephen Harper, who is our Prime Minister. <coughs> this, is, this is weird, I'm just killing shit and talking about politics. Okay, um, he's our Prime Minister, and he has been for quite some time now. Um, the party that was in power before him was the Liberal Party. They are currently being headed by uh, Justin Trudeau who is the son of a former Prime Minister. Need more time. He's extremely charismatic. Um, he definitely more. rolled high on charisma when he was creating his personality. And uh, they are... Well, I should start by saying the Conservative Party is fairly right in terms of Canadian politics. Money. They are not as right as the Republican Party, in my opinion, although with latest policies and interviews that are changing. But they used to be just kind of just right of center. They used to be pretty more conservative. I do not opinion. have enough mana. And Harper took over. Um, more time. The Liberal Party is pretty pretty much just a little bit left of center. Um, they're generally pretty central, kind of true. I think it's been pushing a little bit more, more mana. left this election, which is interesting. Um, and then time. the other main party kind of right now is the NDP, the New here. Democratic Party. Um, they are Up pretty left. Right. Um, I need more time. tend to vote left, so I was, I'm pretty happy with most of their policies. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a, a good party. They were headed by Jack Layton, probably the most amazing politician that was around during my kind of voting prime, I guess you could say. He was in charge of the last election. He got the NDP. I believe it was the first time they'd ever been in official opposition, or the first time in a very long time they had ever been in official opposition in Canada, which was very exciting. I need money. Um, so yeah, it was... Um, and they again are pretty left. Um, they believe in a lot of social programming and not giving tax breaks to corporations and things like that. So there's that, which is are things I generally tend to agree with. Um, and there are a couple other kind of <clears throat> smaller parties that get bigger mentions. Um, for example, there is the Bloc Quebecois, which is a a uh, party that is focused pretty much entirely on the well-being of Quebec, which I guess if you live in Quebec is a great thing, but for the rest of the country, it was for me. It's a little wonky because we don't have an Alberta party, we don't have a Saskatchewan party. Well, I'm sure we do, but they don't have as much press as the Quebec party. Um, they're not entirely separatist, but they definitely like to threaten that Quebec will leave if they aren't catered to, which gets moderately annoying at times on the floor. Um, nice. they kind of got their asses kicked through. last election, though, so I don't really know what's going to happen with them this election. Um, needs more time. so that's the thing. And then the other one that's kind of, kind of gets a lot of press lately, um, ever since Elizabeth May took over, is the Green Party. And they are a really confounding no party to me, because no generally, time. Green Parties tend to be pretty left. And this Green Party, their social policies are somewhat left, um, more moderate, but their fiscal policies are very, very rich, mm -hmm. which is interesting to me. And the first year that I voted in a federal election, I actually voted for them. And not realizing that they were super, super right with a bunch of their fiscal policies, which I'm, I've i never voted no, right in my entire life. I don't know that I ever will. Um, if you believe in things I that the right side money. of politics tends to believe in, that is fine. As long as you are voting and you are voting with someone who you know represents your interests, I may not agree with you politically, but I like the fact that you are taking an invested interest in your country's future or your state or provinces or city's future. So I have no problem with people voting conservative. I will not agree with you, and I will probably debate you on very a lot of things, but I have no problem with you voting for a party that you really agree with their policies. So go vote. Um, 
But yes, so I was very kind of not realizing that, um, yeah, our green party was very pretty right fiscally. So that made for some interesting conversations after I voted and I felt like such a schmuck. Um, just because it wasn't, not because there's anything wrong with those policies, just they didn't align with my views and beliefs. So that was fun. That is that is the election, the first, first federal election. That is the election that I learned that I really needed to read um, platforms before I voted, full platforms, and not just um, pay attention to like the brochures. Um, so in Canada, and I don't know if this is true provincially as well as federally, I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure it is, but we do, we run a system called First Past the Post, which I am not a fan of at all. Um, and the way it works is, and it's not uncommon, um, it's not a, it's not an uncommon poll, it's not an uncommon, um, elect, election style, but it's definitely not the most representative of how a country feels. Um, and the way it works is, uh, it's, it, imagine it like a horse race is how it kind of was explained to me. So the first one to pass the, the first pass the post, the first one to the finish line wins the race. Okay, so. Need more time. Yes. If nobody gets the majority, then it's the person with the most votes. But generally speaking, it's the person who first gets to this number of votes that would enable them to get a majority. So if there time. are, let's say 10,000 possible votes in a riding, the first person to get 5,001 would win, essentially. Um, and then they would probably wait a little while. And it got to a couple, I think they wait, I think they may could get a, try and get a, a couple hundred higher just in case there's some voting discrepancies or problems. But generally speaking, the first one to get to the majority wins because you, there's, only, there's a cap on how many votes there are going to be. So you kind of can lose from that. Um, what I don't like about that system, I think it's a, I think it's a good system in terms of you don't just you don't go back and forth trying to figure out who's going to get it. As soon as you hit a number, you know who's kind of had the most votes. And so that in and of itself is not a bad thing. What I dislike is that, let's say 60% of a riding voted for conservatives. I'm just make it an even number. So 60% of a hunt, let's say, so there's 100 votes in a riding. So 60 people voted for the conservative party. So they would get the seat in the House of Commons. Okay, great. What about the other 40%? Let's say 30% of them voted liberal. Well, that to me should be represented in the House of Commons, especially if you look at it on a federal level, because if in every riding, the majority of the votes, the majority of the voters, so let's say 60% of Canada vote conservative. But if they do it in every riding, that means in the hundreds of ridings that we have, each seat is going to be conservative, which is not really a good representation of Canadian voters because they didn't get 100% of the vote, they got 60%. So if we say 30% of it went to Liberals, well, if they only got 30% of each riding, no one's going to be in the House of Commons. And so anyone who voted Liberal isn't going to have their interests represented. And anyone who voted NDP, let's say 10%, isn't going to have their interests represented either. So I dislike it because it's not its not a proportional representation, which is the kind of system we do like, which is used in a lot of European countries to great avail. But if 60% of Canadians vote Republic, or Republican, vote Conservative, then I think 60% of the seats should be, a cons should be Conservative. And then if 30% vote Liberal, then 30% of the seats should be Liberal. And I don't, I don't like the fact that Throughout Canada, if 20% of the people, if one election was 10 or 15% of the people voted green or independent, I think it was green, but green only had one seat. Well, that's not 10%, and 10, per, 10 or 15%, 10% would be not have 30 enough. seats. So it's, it's stupid in my opinion. Well, it's, just, it's not an accurate representation, and you can kind of tell which way I lean when I say that I think everyone needs to have an accurate voice. but. Regardless, like I said, it's not it's not a system I really, really like. I do quite like how a lot of European countries do theirs with um, proportional representation. I It's not even really just a matter of fairness. I mean, it is, but it's also just a matter of accurate, accurate representation in that when you want to represent, when you want people to know what kind of voters they have in this country and even around your province, you're accurately representing them. 
and I don't know. It's just it's something that I and my husband talk about fairly regularly. We're both pretty active in well not active in politics, but we're both pretty invested in this election. Um, and the last few elections that we've had as well. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the provincial elections in Canada, uh, Alberta just had theirs this past year, and we voted out the Conservative Party, the PCs, the Progressive Conservatives. They're not very progressive, in my opinion. Um, and they, we voted in the NDP. And the Conservatives have been in power for 40 plus years. And so there was a big wave of orange crush, apparently. And Canada was shocked because we are we are known as the Texas of Canada, and we voted in a relatively socialist party. They're not actually a socialist party. They're kind of they have some socialist policies, but we're not. They're not like legitimately socialist. We have a socialist party. Um, but yeah, so that's this is good. I'm kind of wrapping this up as I'm killing the Rift Guardian. So that's awesome. Don't kill me. I didn't use my angry chicken thing yet. Let's blow you up. Yay! You did. You have triumphed. And yeah, so that's that's kind of how that works. And I will say that I am very happy that I have friends and family, but friends especially. I was kind of raised to be a conscientious voter and make sure that my voice was heard and all that. We grew up with. I grew up with election parties, and we're going to one tonight at my mom's, and I'm very excited. But it was a thing that uh, a lot of my friends growing up didn't vote and their parents never talked politics with them. And I just think it's such a huge important part of being an adult and being an involved citizen wherever you live that it's something you should do. Especially when some people, um, women in particular, still in this world are not allowed to vote. It's something that is very important to me. And yeah, I... I am definitely a believer in making your voice heard however you can, and voting is a great way to do it. So that is my video for today. If you are Canadian and you have not voted in the advanced polls last weekend, go out and vote. There is no excuse for you to not go online in this day and age and look up what your party stands for. There are countless quizzes done by various organizations that will tell you where your viewpoints kind of align up with the federal parties. I went on social media and checked out all of my representatives and I found one of them that was genuinely like out there meeting the community and I read about his background. I was actually really excited about the fact that he was running and I'd never heard of him before. It's a brand new area. I, we haven't, um, he didn't run in the last election and I, he just re kind of reaffirmed my belief that I was going to be voting for the party that best matched my interests. So. I will be voting, and I'm really excited after the husband gets home because it's kind of far for me to walk to my polling station. I could, but I'm I'm lazy, and yeah. So, go vote, and I'm gonna keep killing stuff in Diablo. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I do, maybe I'll do more of this and just ramble and do riffs this week because I have stuff that I I'm trying to get this, uh, the season journeys done. So, that is it for today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Have a beautiful day.